Okay, welcome back to VMworld 2013. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host, the co-founder of Wikibon.org. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante. Craig Nunez is here. I think Craig Nunez has probably been on The Cube as much as anybody except Pat Gelsinger, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Jim Gantier, I don't know. No, you've been more, more than, more than Gantier. Kind of like a cube groupie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of, kind of well, bad. welcome back. We're really yeah. good to see you. And, uh, Thank you. Yet another uh, VM world. We're ha very happy to be in San Francisco, I have to say, because we yeah, spend awesome. far too much time in Vegas, <laughs> in deference to HP Discover, which we love as well. But, uh, but it's good to be here, it's good to see you. So. Um, yeah, so we're hearing a lot about SDS, Software Defined mm -hmm. Storage. You guys yep. have been doing that for a while. You and I have, you and I have talked about it, maybe, in, maybe not with those three letters, but, but yep. in, in some way, shape, or form for quite some time. So what do you make of all this SDS trending? Yeah, so it's, uh, to be honest, ab about a year ago when you know, the, the, the catchphrase, I think kind of catalyzed a lot of, you know, certainly where we were kind of viewing the market. Uh, it's helped us a lot because I think we've been trying to, um, in our own way, explain kind of where the value is for folks and why it's interesting. And I think the, um, you know, just uh, hanging under a common label in the industry, software-defined storage, you can have the conversation, what is software-defined storage? Um, and when we talk about it, we say, look, it's, it is, uh, first of all, it's software. It is you know, abstracted from the underlying hardware. Hardware agnostic, which means you can run it not only on HP servers, you can run it on other servers, right? There's no uh, restriction there. It's um, software-defined storage ought to be pretty independent of your hypervisor choice, right? Um, the, uh, the other thing about software-defined storage, and I get the question from time to time, well, what, what do you mean, what do I get in the software? It is you know, a full complement of data services, of storage software that you would expect in a, in a storage array controller, right? Snapshots, replication, federation, right? You should get all of that and go run it in a VM, right? Or run it on bare metal if, if, you're, if you're wanting to do that. But it is software completely abstracted from, from the underlying hardware. And then kind of the, the flip side is it's manageable by an open published API. We kind of like the OpenStack stuff. I think that's got a lot of juice to it. But uh, you know, so we're you know we we believe it's a way to get into high available, highly available storage without you know kind of you know locking yourself into a particular hardware approach or management approach. Right? Greg, I got I want to ask you before we get into some of the some of the HP conversation, more market market space. Obviously. We were talking on the cube about flash. Yeah. Flash, comparing to the Winchester, possibly a bubble, and that's always great speculation. It's good for it's good for views and draw up controversy. But really, flash is very very important. But I want to ask you more of a bigger market space question because okay. when you were at Three Par, you guys were an innovative startup. You were the disruptor. Okay. And now the market's maturing um, in storage, and now flash enters the scene. Now software defined data center mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. a lot of momentum. We heard Carl Eschenbach really going. Hardcore, this is a, yeah. they're marching to software defined yeah. data center. So the question is, who leads? Storage or networking or servers? So oh, it's man. all three. Yeah. Storage seems to be the theme here with Flash, but then it's server side for acceleration. All this stuff is, is interplaying, the convergence. Yeah. Of, what's yeah. your take on this? As someone who's been both on, on the entrepreneurial side of a disruptor, yeah. and now you're at HP with a huge customer base. Yeah, so I think I think the, uh, the maybe the way to think about it, it's a great question is uh, depending on the problem you're trying to solve, um, and let's pick on software defined, right? The problem that you know, a lot of folks are trying to solve with that is a cost problem, right? I don't have the space, I don't have the budget to bring in a standalone disk array to run my virtualization deployment, right? So it's cost, and so you know, it's, it, it becomes very much a convergence theme 
which often starts with your server platform, right? So that's kind of compute-led, but storage is a big consideration. The, um, you know, I think the other end of the spectrum might be when you're thinking about quality of service, right? Flash, HDD. Um, suddenly where your data goes and how you set that up might be a, a more storage-centric conversation, right? With compute more as the peripher peripheral. So you kind of have to start where you're, where you're optimizing, right? Are you optimizing for cost or optimizing for service levels? So, I like your definition of, of software-defined storage. I thought it was straightforward. I mean, that's kind of similar to what, what, what we say at Wikibon. Yeah. It's not, you don't overcomplicate it. Um, so, I want to ask you, why software-defined storage? Why the, why the hype now? Um, you guys have been doing it for a while. Yeah. We weren't calling it that, but what is it about, what's happening, what's the inflection point yeah. in the marketplace? Yeah. Is it just Good question. Intel cores? Yeah. Is, it, yeah. is it, you know, other stuff, you know, costs coming down? Why now? Yeah, it's a combination of things, I think. Perfect storm, right? Mm -hmm. You have um, a lot going on uh, on the microprocessor front, right? Very powerful CPUs in, in our servers, right? Um, so, a lot of uh, available compute not being otherwise spoken for. You have drives that are, what, like four terabytes now per drive, and you have servers with, you know, 24 drive slots, so you've got capacity that abounds in your server infrastructure. You've got compute that abounds in your server infrastructure. So, so now more than ever, you have the resources to tap if you've got the right software to tap that, right? Um, finally, virtualization, I think, is the, the final ingredient because virtualization drives shared storage and this is a, you know, the most cost-effective path to, to shared storage, right? So, so virtualization, compute, and um, capacity resources, right? Okay, and then the other thing is it's server agnostic, it's hypervisor agnostic. Those are two yeah. differentiators from for example, so VMware has its own sort of version of, of software-defined storage. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and talk about what that means to HP. Sure. When you see yeah. you know VMware pushing on like that. I mean, you see what's happening in SDN, and you see the logo slide, and there's you know one yeah. obvious yeah. company missing. And, yeah. and uh, but so. What does that mean from a storage standpoint? Is you know we've seen this for years from Microsoft mm -hmm. and Oracle. They'll grab pieces of the storage stack. That's that's not yeah. a new trend. Yeah, but yeah. it's one that you you have you must be watching and, sure, and tracking. Sure, sure. Yeah, here's here's how I I think about it. And we we talk with uh, our pals at VMware about this all the time. Look, they they are taking vSAN, um, and first of all, it is only deployable in servers uh, that are shipping with Flash and Flash is up and coming, but Flash is very much about, um, uh, I mean, it's very, from a footprint perspective, think of the number of server shipments on the planet, day in and day out. The number with Flash in them is pretty darn small, wouldn't you agree? Single digits, yeah. Yeah. Then within that, um, you know, they're, they're aiming vSAN to enable their business around uh, client virtualization, big data, um, stuff like that. So they're, they're kind of within that, taking this little box, this little focus area to, to drive their business, right? Good idea. Our approach is, is a little different, right? We're looking at that entire uh, server market, not just HP servers, right? The, the whole server market going, hey, you know, insofar as those are being driven into virtualization environments, we have, we have um, a value proposition for customers to you know, bring more cost-effective storage into those budget-pressured virtualization environments. Broadly, right, across the board. So we have a, um, a mature approach uh, with uh, data services that are you know, built on for six years. Uh, and we think uh, we also have um, the combination of a, of a great storage and server business at HP to really uh, deliver value to customers. So what do I buy? Talk about the product set. So I'm, I'm interested, sure. okay, Craig, I like your story. Wait, sell me something. Yeah, so you will start with, uh, well, first of all, let's talk about where you would want to put software-defined storage, right? right? It's a big world out there. So you think about, generally mm. speaking, a, a small site, right? You are budget pressured for your small site, especially if you have a lot of them, right? SME. You know, compounds, so right. think, 
remote office of a large enterprise or, or a, a, a government um, agency or um, a mid-market shop, you know, small space limitation, not a lot of uh, on-site expertise. So you're focusing there. Um, you're probably starting with a couple of servers, right? A few servers. Um, you will uh, um, uh, buy a couple of VSAs, right? Store virtual VSA for uh, shared storage. So that's going to give you the shared storage you need to get virtualization off the ground. Um, that's going to allow you to uh, uh, have highly available storage that uh, you can create snapshots, you can replicate, you can move hot data around your servers on, on really uh, uh, any environment. The, um, the other thing you so could do. So full stack. Yeah, full stack. And Every, I'm talking what? Yeah. How many terabytes? In you could go, uh, so our VSAs, we just uh, had a, a nice announcement recently with some licensing options. You can have a VSA that supports up to 50 terabytes if okay. you want. Um, so say 10 to 50, 20 to 50, how many sure. somewhere in yeah. there? Yeah. So let's, let's pick 10. Yeah. There's uh, 30 terabytes if you, if you picked up three VSAs. Um, what you might also do is uh, we also have uh, you know, brought this concept to our uh, uh, data protection, our backup systems, our store once platform. So you can drop a store once VSA on one of those servers uh, for deduplicated local backup out at your remote office or without having to go again buy hardware. So I need, I need well I got, I, I got to have servers obviously sure. in yeah. there and I got to have some capacity yeah. on those servers. Yeah, the right. point is though you're but your no storage new box. capabilities are living on a VM right, right next to your right, right, right. VMs, right? So I don't have to buy another box. Right. I just have to yep. provision an, another virtual machine and yep. make sure I have enough physical capacity on the, on the that's disk. That's right, yeah. All right. Yeah, that, so that's what you buy, server and a few VMs, uh, server and a few VSAs, I should say. Okay, all right, so I can't. Server yeah. VMware, of course. Yeah. And a few VSAs, right? You got to run an OS. VMware, uh, or there hypervisor. are other hypervisors that you could run and, and we'd support, right? Right. Well, so, so uh, okay, let's talk about that. So VMware, Hyper-V. Uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. And uh, we're looking at some demand for KVM, so that's uh, in uh, So KVM, lo uh, you know, a lot of traction in, in service providers. Yeah. Are you yeah. getting demand so from the, service providers? Well, for you're going to your hear a little bit of, about that uh, later today, I think. The, the service provider space also, think about what they're trying to do. They're trying to deliver an experience um, at the lowest possible cost, right? And uh, particularly for service providers who are trying to bring a bit of multi-tenancy to the services they're deploying, like with store once, a, a, a backup as a service, it's a great way to deliver backup as a service infrastructure without having to throw a bunch of hardware at the problem. You, you uh, stand it up, tear it down as you, as you build out your customer base. Um, and you're going to hear a little, little bit about how you can take advantage of store virtual VSA um, uh, from a service provider uh, perspective from Opus Interactive. They've got a nice uh, use case. So I can you. buy data protection as software. I can buy block services. Yep. Primary storage and information protection yep. all delivered as software as a service, right? All right, so I got to ask you, I can't have you on the cube without asking about three par even though. Yes, I'm thank talking. God. We uh, got a three part uh, question so, too. Love it. So give us all the my update, favorite what's topics. happening. You know, now it's sort of the other end of the spectrum. A lot yes. of software in, in three par, but it's you know tightly coupled, you know, with the with the hardware, you got you know, yeah. cool ASICs in there doing Unnatural yeah. acts yeah. and you know <laughs> driving you know mainframe class. I wouldn't you know, say unnatural. Well, for, but, uh, for 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 the for modular storage. You make it sound dirty, right? I mean, right? I mean, you're doing things that usually you don't associate. I mean, Ten years ago, you wouldn't so, associate true. with modular storage. Three par right? is a very different storage experience from um, you know what a lot of folks uh, are used to if they've kind of been um, raised on you know the traditional dual controller model. And, um, and I'll tell you, the, the approach with 3PAR, in fact, you know, we're talking a lot about software defined, and what, what a software defined data center experience brings the administrators is you know, a reason to not have to understand about what's going on with all the hardware out in the infrastructure, and 3PAR delivers you that experience uh, within the array. You don't need to worry about where uh, you're provisioning, where your snaps are, you know, all of that stuff. You forget about the hardware and you think about, you know, what you're trying to get done in your data center for your business. And the um, platform is absolutely 
on Fireforce. Fastest ramping platform uh, in the enterprise group for HP ever. Um, we uh, introduced uh, a few quarters ago now a, a new mid-range three-part platform, so we kind of packaged the secret sauce from the high end. Big and, total available yeah, market expansion. By yeah, brought that, that down to a, uh, a very affordable price point, but really delivers you all the tier one capabilities of the high end three par um, uh, store serve platform. And so you really have, um, you know, uh, opened up a lot of possibilities for folks who before really, you know, weren't able to, to touch it. So the, the platform growth, uh, we've seen, uh, you know, year over year probably triple the shipments of three par from a year ago, tripled. Right, and we're already on a, a pretty steep growth path. We were right here when uh, when three par was in play. <laughs> our, first <laughs> VM, our first VMware, our first VMware, and we accurately yes. predicted it would end up at, at HP. But uh, <laughs> so good move, um, good move by HP. Um, okay, so then yeah. you announced the all flash array as well. Yes. What's, yep. uh, what's the update there? Yeah. So the uh, the uh, three par store serves seventy four fifty uh, flash top to bottom, and again the uh, you know the the uh, value of the approach we've taken here is you've got, first of all, you know, the performance you'd expect with, um, you know, uh, some great efficiency, right? If you put flash in the most efficient array on the planet, good, good marriage, right? With all of the data services that 3PAR has become, you know, really known and highly regarded for, uh, multi-tenancy, uh, uh, autonomic management, uh, uh, replication, federation, all of these mature data services on this really great flash platform and alongside you know the the, the mid-range platform the high-end platforms so you're really not only able to run QoS within each of these arrays but you're able to you know shift data between arrays non-disruptively as you know data moves through its life cycle only because you're running the same storage operating system across these platforms. It's a powerful, powerful uh, platform. And you got, um, we had Stephen DeWitt on uh, yesterday. Oh, good, yeah. And uh, very, he was high, it's high energy, you know, Steve. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, uh, I, I, we meant to ask him, we said, going to show us a little leg for uh, Barcelona, and we forgot we <laughs> ran out of time. So, can you give us a glimpse of what's coming from Barcelona? What should we be looking for? Uh, well, so HP the. Discover, uh, of course. Yeah, those yeah know so the. Um, the Here's here's the stuff that's really you know happening all around storage, and it's it's for Barcelona. It's next month. It's it's just coming at you, and we've been talking about it. Three par, right? We didn't talk enough about it, but you know, store once and information protection retention, big focus for uh, our business. It, store once is a high growth platform, growing in double digits. A lot of happy customers. Uh, extended into the software-defined realm with the VSA, so a lot going on there, and information protection overall. Um, we have a uh, uh, huge opportunity in the mid-market, so we're doing uh, 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 a fair bit of work with new uh, MSA platforms, just, uh, just in the market, uh, high volume, high performance, really, uh, uh, providing a great entry platform to HP Storage for folks who are, you know, uh, wanting to take uh, that path in, um, and then of course, you know, software defined broadly. You're going to hear a lot about that, and that's uh, uh, those four things: three par, store once, and, and around information protection are, are uh, what we're doing for our mid-market customers, SMB customers, Sorry. and software defined. Cool. All right, Craig, well listen, really appreciate you coming on. John, going wall to wall, how you, how you holding Doing up good. over there? Holding up, <laughs> love to have the cube. Day two, this is three days of live coverage. We may even go on a Thursday, we were so excited. <laughs> so uh, I think we had a great location. If you're uh, watching, you know people here, we're at Moscone South Lobby. If you're watching, go to crowdchat.net and weigh in, crowdchat.net slash VMworld. Go to wikibon.org, go to SiliconANGLE for all the content. All replays will be on uh, youtube.com slash SiliconANGLE. I'm Rock, I'm getting my second wind. We're going to be live <laughs> tonight as well. So, uh, all, all day, Dave, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.